China's policy-making bodies, National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative are holding their 10-day annual sessions colloquially called two sessions. In the opening session, Chinese Premier Li Qixiang also spelled out few signals for the economy. Let's do a three-point analysis of the highlights of the opening session. One, what are the key announcements on China's economy and the fiscal policy? China has reduced its expectation for GDP growth to the range of 6 to 6.5% for calendar year 2019. Chinese GDP has also decelerated to 6.6% in calendar year 18, the slowest in the last three decades. China also aims to keep consumer inflation at 3% and create 11 million urban jobs as well. Now further, China has announced a sharp cut in the value-added tax across sectors. This reduction along with lower social insurance contributions amounts to about 2 trillion yuan or 300 billion US dollars of fiscal stimulus. Now to meet the financing of key projects, special bond issuance quota for the local governments has been kept at about 2 trillion yuan as well. Now this is not a new modus operandi for China to boost domestic consumption. This is a part of the ongoing local government debt reforms wherein local authorities are expected to replace other forms of debt by issuing bonds. However, this time quantum relief on the fiscal side has surged significantly. Now, due to lower tax collection, budget deficit target has also been kept at 2.8% of GDP, which is higher than last year's figure of 2.6%. Two, what is China's stance on monetary policy and deleveraging? Well, China's monetary policy would be used with an aim that money supply and the total social financing is in line with the nominal GDP growth rate of 9 to 9.5%. It would not resort to flooding of stimulus through monetary policy route as well. Further, China mentions that deleveraging efforts and shadow banking risks would also be resolved in an orderly manner and also balance would be maintained between economic growth and the leveraging risks. This also implies that a halt in deleveraging efforts will be done. Other important discussion to come up is the draft foreign investment law, which may have inputs from the ongoing US-China trade talks as well. Three, what are the key takeaways then? Well, China is resorting to fiscal tools to boost consumption, the speed at which foreign investment legislation has been drafted and the omission of the phrase made in China 2025 appears to placate the US authorities. Markets are tre trending positive with an anticipation of a breakthrough in the trade talks and also the domestic stimulus. Now, what remains to be seen is that if steps taken for the revival of domestic consumption are good enough or not. Also, a pause in deleveraging means that debt levels need to be tracked closely as the structural story on this count is still not over.